this is my, I am what it says I am. <laughs> I have what it says I have. I will do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert and my heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the word of God. And I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. Never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to tell you tonight, uh, uh, God has a plan for your life. You hear it all the time, but I'm also going to tell you something else. Quit arguing with him about it. He's got a plan for his life. You know, he knows more than you do. He knows more than I do, and so we need, just need to trust him. There are some ups and downs uh, when we live this life, but if God is for us, who can be against us? Amen? Sometimes there's troubles on our trip. We're going through life. Sometimes there's troubles on our trip. That's why I learned that, that laughter, is, you know, is, is a medicine, you know. And so I try to laugh as much as I possibly can. I think it was uh, uh, Norman Cousins who wrote Laugh After Laugh, The Healing Effect of Laughter. He said, unless you can laugh at yourself, you're on your way to mental illness. And I think that's absolutely right. You've got to learn to laugh at the mistakes you make because you're going to make a bunch of them. Amen? In Acts, the 27th chapter, verses 14 through 25, in the New King James Version, it said, uh, uh, but, but not long after a tempestuous headwind arose called Euryclidon, so when the ship was caught and could not head into the wind, we let her drive. And running under the shelter of an island called Clauda, we, we secured the skiff with good dif difficulty. When they'd taken it on board, they used cables to undergird the ship, and fearing lest they should run aground on certain sands, they struck sail and so were driven. And because we were exceedingly tempest-tossed, the next day they lightened the ship. Uh, wasn't there used to be a song like that? Went up on life's billows, you are tempest-tossed. Anyway, on the third day we threw the ship's tackle overboard with our own hands. Now when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and no small tempest beat on us, all hope that we would be saved was finally given up. Man, I'm going to tell you something. There are some times that can seem like dark times. There are some zero hours you can have inside of your life. But if you haven't, if you haven't lived a life of faith, those zero hours can really take you. But if you've lived a life of faith and learned to trust God, uh, you'll stand strong in the zero hours. Amen? But after long abstinence from food... Then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. Now, if I was going to give advice to anybody, don't be an I told you so. <laughs> but anyway, but that's what Paul basically was doing. Hey, I told you. you know, but anyway, and now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by, by me this night an angel of God, I love this next term. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve. Say, to whom I belong and to whom I serve. Those, I want to tell you, by the way, those are two different things. Because a guy needs to learn that he belongs to God. He's been bought with a price. Then he needs to get off his butt and start serving him. Amen? So he said, to whom I belong. And, uh, uh, but then he goes, and now I urge you to take part. There will be no loss of life among you. Uh, for there stood by me an angel of the Lord uh, God to whom I belong, whom I serve, saying, Don't be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men. For it is Paul talking. For I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. Now, I want you to say that. Say, I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. Let's say it again. I believe God. That it will be just as it was told me. I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. Now, if you'll get to the place where you don't have to have an angel come by and tell it yet, but you can really trust the Word of God, it's the same thing. I've asked people this before. You know, you want to know what to do. There are some people who say, well, I just wish God would take his hand and write it up on the wall. I said, if God wrote it up on the wall, would you do it? Well, yeah. Well, he wrote it on paper, so, I mean, that's certainly as good as on the wall. 
Do you believe God? For by your word or actions are we questioning God's will for our lives. In Romans 9.20 it says, But indeed, O man, who are you to... I love this, the New King James Version. Romans 9.20. But indeed, O man, who are you to reply against God? Will the thing formed say to him who formed it, Why have you made me like this? Well, that's the way people are. Why have you made things like this? We want to blame him for every tragedy that happens. We forget, really, that it's the devil out here to steal, kill, and destroy. There are two people working against us, the devil and ourselves. Amen. And, uh, 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 but I think we do that sometimes. I think we doubt God. Why, if God, if you have called me to do great things inside of my life, then why is all of this happening? You know all of this is a hindrance, Lord. I'd like to hear one guy say what, one time, you know what, Lord, this may seem like a hindrance, but I know one thing, I'll be stronger when I come through this than what I was when I came into it. Did you ever notice bodybuilders? Did you ever notice that they don't tie balloons onto a pole and start lifting it? Look what I can do. Do you know Why? Because it's only that stress that goes on your muscles that will cause them to grow because they need to grow to be able to handle the, the, the extra weight that you're putting to them all the time. And it causes you to be stronger. I'm going to tell you what, some of the things that you've been through, they made you stronger. You've come through some stuff. I mean, Debbie and I were talking about it uh, just the other day. We were sitting there thinking, look at the sum of stuff we came through. And we remember... Many, many years ago when we'd go like this, we'd go through a tough thing and we'd go, my God, how are we going to make it through this? But here we are all these years later, we're still here. You know, my goodness. Sometimes we doubt God. Look at God's answer to Job. Job in all his confusion. In Job 38, 1 through 13 in the New King James, which I know I read normally from the New Living, but the Lord reveals his omnipotence to Job right here. Now, I'm going to tell you a quick story, personal story about this. My wife and I went to, away for one of our anniversaries down to Branson. We checked in this hotel. We had a good time, uh, I mean, with each other, but we had a great time. The next morning we got up and we were reading, actually, from the book of Job. And we started, came to the place where, in our Bible study, where, where, where God was saying, I mean, who are you to challenge me? Where, where were you when I formed the earth? Where, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, but we just started weeping, just started weeping. Oh, God, you're so great. We started worshiping God, you know. But I, so I, lo I love Job. It said, then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding, who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Do you hear that? Do you hear that in the Lord's voice here? Come on, know it all. <laughs> or who stretched the line upon it? And to where were, were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone? And when the morning stars sang together, then all the sons of God shouted for joy. Where were you? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, when I fixed it, my limit for it, and set bars and doors, when I said, this far you may come, but no further. And here your proud waves must stop. Have you commanded the morning since your days began? Don't you love that? Job, have you commanded the morning since your days began? And cause the dawn to know its place, that it might hold uh, uh, of the ends of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it? In Job 40, 1 through 14, he said, Moreover, the Lord answered Job, he said, Shall the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? He who rebukes God, let him answer it. Boy, I don't know why God's not spoken to me, but I... I, I know that's what he's going like. Sometimes when I, I remember the time when I got mad at God and I shook my fist at him. And I said, the most ridiculous thing anybody I believe has ever said to God, I said, God, you let me go through this after all I've done for you? What I've done for him? 
I'm saved and going to heaven. What have I done? God the Father has never turned to God the Son and said, we're going to be all right now, Son. Bob's on our side. <laughs> My goodness. Shall the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? He who rebu rebukes God, let him answer it. Job's response to God now. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer you? I lay my hand over my mouth. <laughs> Come on. You've been there, haven't you? God, I was spouting off. I, you know, there are times when you spouted off some things you know you should never have said. Lay that hand over that mouth. What shall I answer you? I lay my hand over my mouth. Once I've spoken, but I will not answer. Yes, twice. But I proceed no further. <laughs> Then God challenges Job again. said, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Now, prepare yourself like a man. I'll question you, and you shall answer me. Would you indeed annul my judgment? Would you condemn me that you may be justified? Have you an arm like God's? Or can you thunder with a voice like his? Then adorn yourself. Boy, listen to this. This is God talking to Job. Then adorn yourself with majesty and splendor and array yourself with the glory and beauty. Disperse the rage of your wrath. Look on everyone who is proud and humble him. Look on everyone who is proud and bring him low. Tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in their dust together. Bind their faces in hidden darkness. Then I will also confess to you that your own right hand can save you. Job, you've been talking and running off with the mouth, God's saying. You can really do all these things, and if you can do all the things that I've done, guess what? I'll shut up and I'll let you handle things. Life is a journey. We had our first uh, meeting the other night of the grief deal. I thought it went rather well for the first meeting and, and uh, give people an opportunity to express grief and stuff. But, uh, but I really landed on the name Journey uh, because I think that's a good thing. We're going to take a journey together and get better. Amen? And uh, that's the way life is. But, it, but you know, uh, he's saying, who are, who are we to argue with God about anything? There's something about recognizing God for who he is that's very humbling if we'll do that and not take God and make him some little bitty creature that we think we're in control of. I remember one of the great revelations I got years ago, and you've heard me preach on it, but when I got the revelation that before anything else existed, God existed. So before there were any stars and planets or anything else out in space, it was nothing but blackness and darkness. There was nothing there except God, the presence of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And then God didn't say, we know by Ephesians 1 that God didn't say, I'm going to create man because I'm lonely. Because God wasn't lonely. God's not lacking anything. I heard a preacher preach this one time. He was emphatic about it. And I just wanted to stand up and say, that's not true. Because I had this revelation from God. He's speaking, God had, to, it, God had to create man so he'd have somebody worship him. God's not insecure. He doesn't need anybody to go, you're doing all right, God. Yay, yay, yay. No. The Bible says in Ephesians 1 that what God did, he did out of his good pleasure. I love that. That means that bobcaps may sometimes get on people's nerves, but guess what? God created me out of his good pleasure. Not for any reason. He just wanted me there. Think about that. Just say that. God wanted me here, so he made me. Isn't that good? My goodness. I love it. What he does, he does out of his good pleasure, not because out of his need, because God needs nothing. We even know that, that, uh, uh, that Paul the Apostle, I believe he said that in the 17th chapter of the book of Acts, when he said God is not something created by man as if he would ever need anything. Because God doesn't need anything. So it, knowing that God needs absolutely nothing, it's a rare privilege uh, uh, to be blessed with the revelation 
that we're here because he wants us here. That's the shame that I, I, I find with, with uh, people that go through things and start really putting themselves down. And I'll say, you're, you're no mistake. You're not junk. You, 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 you're not some kind of weird freak of nature that God didn't mean to happen, but you did come out at, after all. I held little Chloe on my lap at the age of four years old. I remember I was holding her one time, and she's a smart little gal. I said, you're so beautiful. She said, I'm not pretty. I'm brown. One of the kids had told her that. I said, honey, you know, girls go to the tanning salons all the time just to try to get brown. <laughs> That's a beautiful color, and I love your color. God made you that color. And my hair's all curly. And I said, honey, girls go to the beauty supply place to get whatever it takes to make their hair curly. But yours is just naturally curly. You're an absolutely gorgeous girl, and God made you just the way that you are. There's a great revelation for us to get from that. Did you know what? We do everything to try to change our appearances. And did you know I really believe God always knew there was going to be some fat people, skinny people, Tall people, short people, people really nice and people with extreme attitudes. He knew it all. And he said, you know, I know exactly where to slot them and use them. I can do them, use this one here, this one over there. This one wouldn't be any good over here, but I can take him and use him over here. Amen? I got in a discussion with some other preachers, and they said, wouldn't you like to preach in front of 6,000 people? No, because God gives... Uh, 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 according to your own ability. So evidently, I've got 200 people ability and not 6,000 people ability, so I'll just stick with who we got. Amen? The thing about it is to be thankful wherever you are in life and whatever step that you are in life, be thankful, realizing that we have been fearfully and wondrously made and that there's a purpose in all of our lives. Amen? What are we, wh what are we to say? to a God that would correct him or challenge the decisions that he's made. And people do it, sometimes they do it really innocently. Well, if I'd been God, I wouldn't have let the devil live at all. No, if you'd been God, you'd have done exactly what he did. He knows what's the best thing, how to handle everything. Why do you have to do salvation the way he did? Because that was the only way he could do it. Well, I don't understand it. You know why you don't understand it? Because you're not God. The other day when I was driving Uber, I had this young man get in there and he said, I want you to explain something to me. I handed him a card when I was done with the ride. I don't spend my time preaching at him, but I get plenty of opportunities when I'll hand him a card or something or they'll ask me, do you do this full time? No, I pastor a church and they'll want to ask me a question. And uh, this guy was really full of questions. He said, let me tell you what I think. And, and I said, it don't matter. What do you mean it don't matter? I said, what you think will only affect your reality, but it'll never change God's reality. Because God will always be who he said he was. And whether or not you believe that will only affect how well you live in life, but it's not going to affect God any. Who are we to say we're not blessed if God says we are a blessed people? Who are we to tell God that we cannot do what he's called us to do? We trust in what God has said. We need to live our lives that way. Romans 9, 20 again says, But indeed, O man, who are you to reply against God? Will the thing formed say to him who formed it, Why have you made me like this? One of the most beautiful discussions I had other than uh, the Chloe one time was with another child who was born with some deformities. And as I, as, as I held this little child in my arms, was loving on this child, uh, yeah, I was really moved by the fact that they wanted to know, why did God make me like this? And I could have went through all kinds of things and tried to make up something, but I didn't want to do this. So I just told him what God had laid in my heart. I said, did you know what? If there was a thing God could change about you, he wouldn't do it. Well, why not? 
Because God loves you just the way you are, buddy. He loves you just the way you are. You don't have to become something else to have the approval of your Heavenly Father. He loves you just the way you are. I think there's some day when we're going to when we're in the presence of God, that we may suddenly find out some of the things that we thought were disabilities weren't disabilities at all. I remember at the church we used to uh, uh, attend over at New Life Center of God, there, there was a gal there that had Down syndrome, you know. And you know who I'm talking about. That boy, she loved Bob Capps. She'd run across the room to Bob Caps and give Bob Caps a hug, and whenever she'd see him, she'd just very loving and kind and full of Jesus. And I tried to think of one thing I'd want to change about her, and I can't think of it. I can't think of it. It is the very thing where we try to figure out things that we have no knowledge of. And we try to act like we know something about it. But who are we to reply to this God? Why did you create me this way? I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. I believe this word of God and I believe that I believe him that it will be just as it was told me. I choose to believe in this word and I believe that God, when he says it, it'll be a certain way, it'll always be that. God says that anything is possible through him. So what does that mean? That means I believe it. As born-again believers, we've got come to realize that God's given us the ability to be champions in this life. We don't have to be people who settle. We all go through difficult things, but the heartbreak for me is when I see somebody who is settling for that, just settle for wherever they are in life, Rather than understand that, that we can be overcomers. No matter where we started, we can always be overcomers. We can move up to a higher level. We can reign over all things. There should be nothing too difficult for us. When we look to God, our possibilities in life are suddenly without limitation. Turn to your neighbor and say, there are no limits on me. Because there are no limits on God. Philippians 4.13, you know it. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There's another older, older translation that says, I'm ready for anything through the strength of him who makes me strong. The Jerusalem Bible says it like that. There's nothing I cannot master with the help of the one who gives me strength. I love it. 1 Timothy 1.12 says, I thank him who has made me equal to the task. He's made me equal to the task. I remember uh, telling my wife one time when we had a lot of things going on at the church, this little fire for me to put out, that little fire for me to put out, two other people not getting along, somebody complaining about this or that, and going on and on. And uh, I said, I, I don't think I can do it anymore. She goes, you never could. Well, thank you. <laughs> she goes, you've been telling everybody for a long time anything good comes out of you is because God did it. And she goes, well, she's going to be the same way now? She goes, you can't. That's like when my mother, when I told you six months ago, when I called my mother, said, I'm done. I've had it. I'm out of the ministry. I'm done. She goes, well, it's a good thing you're not the boss. <laughs> she said, if you were the boss, if your name was God, you could make a decision like that. Just once I'd like her to cut me a little slack. <laughs> That's what moms do, though, isn't it? Romans 8.37, 8, I'm, I'm going to try to get this out. Romans 8.37, yet in all these things we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. In this message, I want to give you some things that God says you can do through his strength. I believe what God says about me. I believe what he says about me. Did you know there are people that say, oh, I believe you can do anything, but, but when they try to personalize it for themselves, then somewhere it loses something in translation. And so they, they don't really believe that they can do all things, but they believe there's other people that can do all things because other people are closer to God than they are. You've got to stop that. Remember, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We know that he is, and we know that he is a rewarder. Amen? 
If you can believe, all things are possible, Jesus said. Do you believe that God's made you equal to any task? Do you believe that? Did you know before I was a Christian, I really would try new things all the time. I'd hire, I'd hire on somewhere, and they'd say, have you ever done that? I'd say, don't make any difference. I've done it before. I can do it. And I lived my life that way. When I became a Christian, I started understanding why I could do some of those things because I needed to be able to do some of those things for the thing he was going to call me to later in life. Do you believe that God will take your impossibilities and turn, turn them into possibilities? Do you believe that you're more than a conqueror through him? You can believe. You've got to believe if you're going to be a champion for Christ. Ephesians 1, 19 and 20, I love this part of the verse where it says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? There's a lot of power in those who believe. Amen? Because of their faith. I believe I can change. Say that. I believe I can change. See, what I have been, that doesn't dictate to me who I am or who I'm going to be. I believe I can change. Amen? You know, uh, uh, I've had people uh, tell me this. I, there was a law enforcement officer who used to be here in, in Buckner. He told me, let me tell you right now, people don't change. I said, yeah, they do. He said, no, it's impossible for them to change. I said, no, I'm telling you, I'd have to resign as a pastor if I didn't believe anybody could change. He said, have you ever made anybody change? I said, I changed. And if I changed, I know other people can change. I didn't want to say what I was feeling. I wanted to go, obviously I've changed because my whole life I'd have slapped you down for talking that way to me. You know what I'm saying? So, but I didn't think that'd be a good thing to do. So. Second Corinthians 3.18, I love this. Is, this is a great, great key here. But we all, with unveiled face, Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. When I, when I put on the new man, I put on Jesus. Now, my, by spending time in his presence and, and looking at Jesus, I'll tell you what, he's bringing me from one level to another level to another level to another level. Not by my looking at a, uh, at a bunch of reg rules and regulations and living by that, by allowing Christ to live through me. Ephesians 4.22 says that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to de deceitful lust. Say this, I believe God that it'll be just as it was told me. The next thing is I want to tell you, uh, uh, I know I can change and I also control what I think. For years, I put up with people going like this. You know, so-and-so said this. It just made me angry. No, it didn't. You chose to be angry. That was your response to what was happening. No, it can make you angry. You just respond in anger because that's what you choose to do. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 says, Though we walk in the flesh, we don't war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Now watch this. I control what I think. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of God. Well, obviously I can control what I think if, if my job is to bring every thought into obedience, into captivity to the obedience of God. He even tells me in Philippians 4 to meditate on certain things. Would he tell you to think on certain things if you had no ability to control what you think? No, we control it. He says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just. It doesn't say, finally, brethren, whatever things Obama said or whatever things Trump said, sit around and think about that. No, he says, Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. I had a guy in the Uber car at about 5 o'clock this morning, I know about 7 o'clock this morning, that was telling me, trying to get me involved in a, in a political discussion. I said, I don't discuss politics. Well, you discuss religion. No, I don't discuss religion either. 
You don't? No, I don't discuss politics or religion. I'm not going to fight with you about anything. You can believe whatever you want to believe. Well, don't you have beliefs as a pastor? Yeah. But we're not going to have a fight in this car over what we believe because we can't get any better by doing things like that. You have a right to believe whatever you want. I have a right to believe what I want. Amen? The next thing I want you to know is I, uh, not only can I control what I think and stuff, but I need to realize that I make a difference in this world. What I do makes a difference in this world. We act like we float through life. People are in survival mode, and they act like they just float through life. And, and they're just, you know, when I get somebody that I'm talking to that their greatest goal is for somebody to be on disability. Well, I'm just hoping I get on disability. Well, how much are you going to get? I talked to somebody not too long ago. How much are you going to get? I'm going to get $800 a month. And that is the goal you have is to make $800 a month? Do we need to raise our level of thinking up a little bit more? When God wants us to prosper, do you th really think that his plan of prosperity is for you to be on disability? No. He's got better things for you than that. I'm not against disability who people are really disabled and they need some help. But I told a guy the other day, uh, well, you know, it's been longer than that now. Remember I told you the other day about a guy that I picked up who was blind and I was treating him like he was blind and he corrected me rather sharply. Because he's getting ready to retire from the, from the IRS, and he's worked a job all those years, and he's blind. And when he was coming up to the van, I opened up the door to the van. I said, uh, do you want me to give you a hand? He said, I'm blind, not lame. Oh. Okay. We got to his house without sinking because it was dark by the time I got up to his house, and he didn't have a light on, which I would stumble and break my neck or something. But anyway... So I said, there's no light on. You want help to get up there? He said, it's always dark for me, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so when I ran, somebody into, uh, ran into somebody after that was telling me, you know what? My eyesight is not very good anymore, so there's nothing I'm going to be able to do with my life. I said, don't you fall for that lie. Your eyesight's not the only thing that God gave you. You have a lot of different ways that you can do things in life. I think we're pretty much excuse. Uh, use, we use excuses all the time for not accomplishing great things. We can do anything. We can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. The next point is that not only can I make a change, but I can accomplish great things. It's never been in my mind to accomplish small things. Anybody that knows me knows I'm a little overboard about a lot of things. Because I really believe that I can do great things. I've never believed that I was held back from doing anything that I set my heart into, and especially the thing that God calls me to. John 14, 12, Jesus said it like this. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works in these he will do because I go to my Father. The next thing is when everybody falls, I stand in the midst of trouble. Because I know Jesus Christ, when everybody else is panicky, I'm not panicky. Because I haven't placed my faith in man. I've placed my faith in God. Years ago, we had a guy that, that uh, quit coming here who was a really uh, big tither. And one of the people that were leaders said, well, what are we going to do now that he left? I said, that man has never been my source at any time in my life. He's not this church's source either. And guess what? We didn't close our doors because they left. It was an amazing thing. His wife came to me one time and said, here's what I want you to do. I had some things she wanted me to do. I said, you know, in the church, I said, well, no, we're not doing that. That's not a part of our vision. She goes, let me tell you something. We tithe enough here that you need to make it your vision. And I said, well, let me tell you this. You can't buy. I'm not for sale. So no matter what you say to me, it doesn't make any difference how much money you give. We're going to do what God leads us to do, not what you want us to do. Amen? 
but I stand in the midst of trouble. I heard Debbie telling one of her friends one time, if there's ever a crisis, you want Bob around because he won't be panicking. I don't panic. The Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. I've identified that most of the things that happen to us in life are not really evil people, but the demons that are pushing them on, the devil is pushing them on, trying to, trying to cause. I recognize that. It's a spiritual battle that we're fighting. And most of the fight that we got can be handled on our knees. Second Samuel 23, 11 and 12. And after him was Shammah, the son of Agi, the Hararite. The Philistines had gathered together in a troop, and there was a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines, but he stationed himself in the middle of the field, defended it, killed the Philistines, and the Lord brought, brought about great victory. You may feel like you're the only one. I got news for you. If you're the only one standing against it, then God will empower you to make the stand and give you victory in it. Amen? Because of things like social media, now we think we've got to have everybody to come into agreement with us. You don't have to have everybody come in agreement. You just need to be in agreement with what the Holy Ghost told you. That's pretty good agreement. When God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost has told you to do something and you come into agreement with that, it's going to happen. And maybe everybody will rise up against you, but that's okay. They have as much right to be wrong as anyone else. The next thing that I do is I defeat the enemy. I defeat the enemy on a regular basis because I put the word of God in my mouth and I proclaim it with my mouth. 1 John 4, 4 said, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in this world. And the last thing I want to tell you that I do well is I finish well. We as believers ought to finish well. 2 Timothy 4, 6, and 7, Paul the Apostle said, I'm ready to be poured out as a drink offering. At the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And I have kept the faith. Let me tell you something. I don't know how long. I think I'll live to be a very old man. But if I don't live to be a very old man, I'm still going to finish well. Because I've made God number one in my life. And I'm letting him lead my life. Amen. You receive that from the pastor tonight? Hope that was an encouraging word to you. All right, let's stand to our feet. Yes? Yeah, the offering. Jonathan's always good at reminding me to let you know that there's an offering plate up here. And uh, you guys can bring your hundreds of thousands up here as soon as we close. Thank you, Jonathan. See, if you weren't here, then Debbie would have to be here. But one of you two is always going to remind me to take up an offering. Amen. Let's just lift our hands and say, Thank you, Lord, that I've been called, appointed, anointed. I'm ready to go forward. I'm not worried about the devil. Greater is he that's in me than that devil that's in the world. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. There's a plan for my life. I'm not going to argue with God. I'm going forward with a plan. In Jesus' name, amen. I will give him a clap offering. He's a good God, isn't he? Amen.